Oh, good morning. We'll give it just a minute here uh, while we wait on peeps to, to join in. Hope everybody is having a wonderful <clears throat> Sunday morning, April the 19th. We've got uh, uh, this Sunday and one more where we'll be like this, and then hopefully that first Sunday in May, we will be able to get back together and uh, have a church service gathered together. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I know, I think most of you are. Uh, you might like not seeing me physically, uh, but just uh, virtually through the phone. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to deal with things, right? Sometimes you just have to get it past those things that you don't want. Uh, this morning, here in just a few moments, uh, and I'll mention it again here in, in a few moments, but uh, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. Uh, but before we get there, uh, let's uh, say thank you to everyone who helped with Food Bank this week. Uh, it couldn't have, been, if it had just been Lisa doing it or just a couple of people uh, working throughout the week and then yesterday, it would not have been good because it was a lot of work, a lot of hours uh, spent uh, at the church getting stuff ready, getting boxes ready, getting boxes made, um, and putting stuff away. And then uh, a good time yesterday uh, getting the food out to uh, everyone who came and, and got some. It was uh, a good, uh, efficient uh, week, and uh, nobody, nobody got hurt. Nobody got mad except for maybe Lucy. Uh, and I always say that just because she's my wife and I like to pick. Uh, she does have... A little bit redder face today because of sunburn uh, on her forehead. She was wearing a mask. Okay, so she has sunburn on her forehead, her nose, and the top of her cheeks. Uh, so it, it does look kind of uh, a little bit more fun, and I can talk about her because you can't see her right now. Uh, and uh, then when you do see her, you'll go, "Oh, we remember Chris talking about that the other day." So. Uh, so food bank went really well. Uh, as far as announcements, uh, we're just looking forward to getting back together in a couple of weeks. And when we do, we will have uh, Sunday school at 9.45. We will have church at 11. And we will have our adult Bible study in the evening time at 6. We'll figure out uh, kids club and youth group going forward. <clears throat> Might get back together for for kids club for a party, uh, but uh, don't know uh, all of the dealings with that yet. Plus, I'm not in charge of it. I just show up and have fun. Uh, so I'll let them make that decision here in the next couple of weeks when we know what's going on. Um, church camp, getting ready for church camp. It's in July, July 20th through the 25th. Uh, and if your child is seventh grade through finishing their senior year, they can go. It's $100. Uh, it's actually $165, but the church pays $65 and uh, $100 uh, by the kids. Um, and uh, we go to Casper Mountain, Wyoming and have a good time. As long as we're going to be able to go, we're going to go. Uh, and as far as I know right now, camp is still on because I did talk to them this week. So, uh, Looking forward to that and planning for things that we're doing this summer. Uh, things that are just a couple of months away, really. Uh, so be thinking about those things. Be praying about those things. All of the stuff with uh, churches all over our community and our state and our country uh, that are dealing with all of these same things that we are. Uh, so pray for them uh, and pray for us. Uh, if you do have any prayer requests, remember you can always message them to us, or you can call us, or you can tell us when you see us around town, however uh, you want to do that, uh, and we will pray for you. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, um, until then, I guess keep them to yourself unless you want to tell us. We prefer you. It's always good to share. Uh, not so that we can uh, tell everybody else because that's not what we do, but so that we can uh, go through things with you uh, and uh, share and pray and uh, encourage each other. Um, so we will pray now and then we will get into our message this morning. Uh, again, thank you for, for joining. Thank you for watching. Uh, in case you're wondering who I am, I'm Pastor Chris uh, with Willow Bay Baptist Church in American Falls, Idaho. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that uh, we have the technology to gather together as we are this morning. Uh, Lord, we do look forward to the day when we can physically gather together and we can uh, worship you uh, like we have done in the past, Lord, with the knowledge of what we're doing right now, Lord, and, and growing and looking forward to all that you have in store for us, Lord. Help us to learn today. Help us to hear your word and respond to your word, Lord, to know that, that you have done amazing things for us and all we have to do is believe in you all we have to do is join in lord uh, help us to to do that and to to respond uh, with with a heart that has a desire to follow you like never before lord lord we thank you for for everyone who is uh, joining with us today we ask that you keep us safe uh, Lord, and then just uh, help us to multiply. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, so Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. Uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to keep with my, my heading of His blood speaks a better word. And then, uh, and then go from there in the title. And this week it is some traditions are better remembered, but not followed. Uh, and I'm sure that if you think in your life, in your family life, in the history of it, there are traditions that everyone has. Now, some of them are strange. Some of them are really good. Some of them should continue on. Some of them are better off just left in the past. And some of them are better remembered but maybe not followed so much. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning uh, and dive into chapter 9 of Hebrews and then continue on from there next week. Uh, but just so that you know, there are some extremely strange traditions out there that I would, I would say they're strange. Things that I'm not going to join in with. Um, for instance, in, uh, I believe it's Wisconsin, they have an annual cow chip throw. Um, this is not like chips and salsa, okay? You have to understand what cow chips are. Uh, and, and basically cow chips are dried cow patties or dried cow poop. Um, and so people gather together for a weekend. And at the end of the weekend, they see who can throw the cow chips the furthest. That to me seems like a tradition that's better forgotten uh, better just done away with. Uh, doesn't make sense to me, right? Kaylin's shaking her head no, like, this. that's weird. I don't want to be throwing around cow chips. Uh, but people do those things. Uh, another thing would be in uh, West Virginia, uh, there is a uh, roadkill cook-off. Okay, so you go get roadkill off of the road, so a possum, a skunk, a deer, um, whatever else may get hit. <laughs> Hopefully not dogs and cats, because that seems to be what's on the road the most, maybe. Uh, but possums, raccoons, uh, and they cook them and see who has the best. Uh, I'm not joining in on that. Um, I, I have a hard enough time even eating out of a food truck, because it just doesn't seem sanitary to me. I know that they are, and I know that there are good things about it, uh, but uh, roadkill cook-off, I'm not doing. Um, 
I, I was thinking about some of the traditions in my life uh, that I could do away with. I'm, I would be okay if they were just remembered and uh, maybe not followed anymore. And I thought of New Year's Eve. I would be completely fine going to bed at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve and not staying up till midnight playing games and eating black eyed peas or eating cabbage or whatever else that you may do on New Year's Eve. It's a great tradition, but I would be okay not doing it. Uh, and by the way, there are many more, many more traditions that we can think of, that we can talk about, uh, that we can laugh at, that we can joke about. And then there are traditions in our churches uh, that we hold on to things that really are just traditions. They're not, they're not biblical at all, uh, but they're things that people have done out of respect for many years. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, as long as they remember that, as long as we remember that they're just traditions. And sometimes tradition, it's okay to not follow a tradition. It's okay to just remember it. Uh, and so uh, with that being said, let's read Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, verse, and we're going to start and just read verses 1 through 10 first. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things in the, the Old Testament uh, that we don't have to do anymore, but they are really important for us to remember. So starting in verse 1 of chapter 9, it says, Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up in its set up. In its first room were the lampstand and the table with its consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had the golden altar of incense and the gold covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priest entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room and that only once a year, and never without blood, which he offered for himself, and for the sins the people had committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit was showing by this, that by this, that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. This is an illusion for the present, present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. So the, so the writer of Hebrews here, the preacher in Hebrews, is saying that these things that have been going on, these things that we've been doing year after year after year after year are external regulations applying only until the time of the new order. So if we want to think about this, okay, and, and we do because that's what we're talking about this morning, okay, traditions, when these were instituted, when all of these things in the Old Testament, all of the things in the book of Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, when these laws were instituted, they were not traditions. They were things that were set up and ordained by God for them to do until the appointed time of the new order. Well, at this point, when the author of Hebrews is writing, the new order has happened. But more than likely, there are still a lot of people in the church following all of these old regulations. So now they've become traditions. They've become things that because we've done them year after year after year, we have to keep doing them. And so the writer in, in Hebrews is saying, no, no, let's look forward because we have the blood of Christ. Okay, so let's think about this real quick. The, the 
writer in Hebrews is talking about the tabernacle. Okay? And the tabernacle, I just imagine it in my head, as, as, as the first one as a tent, and then they had the temple, and probably beautiful in every sense of the word. Okay? It, was, it was probably fairly good size, and there was an outer room in it, uh, in this tabernacle or temple. And in that outer room contained some of the things uh, that God had consecrated, some of the things that we read about in the beginning of Hebrews that you can read about in Exodus 25 and 26. Uh, the, the golden altar, the gold cover, Ark of the Covenant, which would have been in the Holy of Holies, the, the gold jar of manna, all of these things were covered in gold. And so I guarantee you, it was a beautiful place. It was a beautiful room. And when you step into it, maybe, you know, you just, there's, there's an aura about the place. Okay. Uh, it, it, just a, a sense of being in a place that is, that is ordained by God. And so that was the outer room. And then there was a veil that covered this second room. And in it, it was called the most holy place or the holy of holies. And in there, what would happen is the priest, every year, the time of atonement, the time of forgiveness of sins, the time to, to sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, he would go in, not on his own accord, but he would take blood in, okay? And so if you look at Leviticus chapter 16, okay? And you can read it later, but Leviticus chapter 16 would say that Aaron would go into the Holy of Holies and he would take blood in. He'd have to take a, a bull for himself that he had to sacrifice for his own sins. And then he would have to take uh, two goats and a ram. Uh, and uh, they were for the forgiveness of sins of the people, the sins that maybe they didn't realize that they were doing. Uh, and so these things became traditions later on, but at the beginning they were instituting them, right? And so when Aaron would go into the temple or into this holy of holies, this place of holy of holies, before he went in, he had to wash his body, he had to put on certain ceremonial clothing. And like I said, he sacrificed the bull for his own sins. And then he had two goats, okay? And uh, one of these goats, and, and what he would do is he would cast lots, right? He would basically, one of the goats don't draw the shorter stick, but he would draw the shorter stick for them or the stick for them. And one of the goats would then be sacrificed for the sins of the people, okay? That was, that was what one of the goats was for. The second goat was called the scapegoat. And what, it, what was done with it was that goat was then released out into the wilderness, pushed away from the town, uh, and it was symbolic of the guilt of those sins being removed from the lives of people. Unfortunately, they had to continue to do these things every year. So even after that goat has been removed and that guilt is gone, they still feel the weight and the burdens of the guilt because... Once again, they sinned, and they were ceremonially unclean at that point, and had to bring another sacrifice over and over and over and over again. Kind of tedious, right? Something that it's okay for us to remember, because the significance of the things that God had instituted in the Old Testament, compared with what God did in the New Testament through the blood of his Christ, blood of Christ, shows us how much he loves us, shows us how much he cares about us, because the things in the Old Testament were only temporary, right? They only, they only lasted a little while, as opposed to the thing in the New Testament with Christ dying on the cross, which we celebrated last week with Easter, right? Is something that lasts forever. So through the blood of Christ, these things become traditions that are better remembered and not followed. We don't have to follow these things anymore. Praise the Lord. We don't have to follow these things anymore. And we'll talk about a couple of the benefits of that here in just a moment. But let's read verses 11 through 14 in Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands, that is to say is not a part of this creation. 
He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who were ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly sprinkled, hold on, outwardly clean. I almost went backwards a line there. How much more, this is verse 14, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience? How much more will it cleanse our conscience? From the acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God. How beautiful a passage that is right there. Those, those 11, 12, 13, and 14, talking about Jesus who has come as high priest. And remember, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a, a better priesthood. And he went through a better tabernacle, a greater tabernacle, and gave us a better form of worship, right? They were worshiping one way, and now we have a better way of worship. And what it means there by saying that he went through a greater tabernacle, he's saying that he went through the tabernacle in heaven. Because the tabernacle that was built here on earth, that was the temple that was built here on earth, was just a shadow or a copy of what was in heaven. It's what it says, uh, and we talked about in chapter 8 just a little bit. So it was just a shadow of, just a copy, a picture of what God has in heaven. And Jesus went through there, okay, and by means of his blood, and not the blood of, of goats and calves and ashes of heifers and different things like that, did he come, but by the blood of himself, he came, and he did something that those things couldn't do. Because they only outwardly cleansed them for a moment, right? But the blood of Christ not only cleanses us outwardly, but it cleanses us inwardly. It says it can cleanse our conscience. Our conscience is not something that's outward, right? It's something that's inside of us. Okay? And it cleanses us from the inside out. And it gives us the opportunity to not follow traditions that we don't need to follow anymore. We can, we can not forget them because I, I want to make clear that we, I don't want to forget the things of the Old Testament, the things that maybe became traditions after they didn't have to be. Because these things are beautiful things that were done in the, the Old Testament and the progression of what God has done for us through them and through His Son, Jesus Christ. I mean, it... It tells us how much he loves us. It shows us how much he loves us, how much he cares about us, how much he wants us to be cleansed, okay? So here's some of the, here's some of the benefits, some of the features of not following these traditions, okay? So before that, though, that means if we follow those traditions, we have to keep, we keep sacrificing animals. Okay? We keep sacrificing things. We don't get to draw near to the presence of God because we cannot go into the Holy of Holies. Okay? Only the Most High Priest, okay, the, the priest that was set aside for that year got to go into the Holy of Holies. One person got to go into the presence of God and only at the point of the time when, when the cloud that represented the presence of God came down and set itself over the temple, right? So we would have to keep doing all of these things and sending out the goats to get rid of our guilt. But instead, think about this. The common man, you and I, the common person can draw personally near to God. Think back a week and think to that Friday. And if you've, you've read, the, read the scriptures, if you've ever seen a movie that depicted the crucifixion, 
there's an earthquake that happens, and in the midst of that earthquake and that turmoil, in the temple of the, and, and the Holy of Holies, there's this big veil, this curtain, and it is split. It is ripped from top to bottom, and you can see into the Holy of Holies. That symbolizes, that signifies that no longer does it, is it just the priest, just the, just the pastor who can go into the presence of God. It means that all of us can. Every one of us, young, old, living in sin, living a life Full and full, the fullness of what God has to offer right now can draw near to God. We can draw near to God in, in growth and in learning about who He is and wanting to draw near to Him. We can draw near to God in, in our sin because we're, we're seeking repentance and we're seeking salvation uh, so that we can have that pure and perfect and holy relationship with the God who created the heavens and the earth. No longer are we separated from having a relationship. We can now have the same type of relationship, a personal one, like Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden, where they walked with God. And they talked with God. And you may think, well, I can't physically walk with God right now. No, you probably can't physically walk with God right now. Okay, I'm not going to say he won't just come down and walk next to you because I'm not God and I don't make decisions for him. You can have a personal relationship with him. You don't have to come to me or anyone else to say, hey Chris, go, go talk to God about this for me. Go, go see what he wants me to do in this situation. You can talk to God. You can ask him those things. And I encourage you to. Now, I'm not going to tell you. I, I still think it's good for you to talk to your pastor about things that are going on in your life. I still think it's good for you to talk to, to mentors and those who, who are uh, uh, very strong in the, in the Christian faith uh, about the things that are going on in your life. But just because you're talking about them with us and that we're helping you grow and we're encouraging you in those things doesn't mean that you don't get to go to God personally. The veil has been removed. This may be one of the, the best things about not having to follow traditions is that I don't have to go to anyone else to get to God. He is right here with me now. I can talk to him directly. I can seek him out directly. And he will listen to me. He will hear me when I call his name. Scripture tells us that, right? Scripture tells us that he will hear us. Another feature and one that I really like since I, I am a pastor and I called to, was called to be a pastor, uh, I am grateful that the blood that they offered every year and at different times of the year doesn't have to be offered anymore. And, and I, I say that with the little bit of smirk up here in my mind because man I don't I don't want to just do sacrifices okay it's not what I'm here for and the, and the problem with those sacrifices and living by those traditions now would be that those things that they did those sacrifices were all temporary the greatness the betterness and I know that that's not a word about what Christ did for us through his blood on the cross is that it was final. There is finality in what Christ did. His blood has the power to offer eternal redemption, not yearly or monthly or weekly redemption, 
so we don't have to bring blood every year. Christ died for us once for all a little over 2,000 years ago. His blood, that lamb, that goat that drew that lot, right? Okay? Removes and forgives our sins everlasting. Praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord. Now, let's be clear here. This doesn't mean that you don't still come to God and repent or confess your sins that you have in your life on a daily basis now. What it means is that they were forgiven before you even did them. That the blood of Christ was shed for them before you even thought about committing this sin. But then when you realize that you commit the sin, it's time to confess it to him, right? And repent of it and remove it, have it removed from your life. You don't want to live in it. You don't want to dwell upon it. And we can know that God has already sent his son to die for it. We don't have to imagine that. If we still, you know, Christ did what he did, but we still decided, no, we want to live under the traditions of the old. Well, what day did you not sin? Yeah, think about that. What day did you not sin? Well, there's not a day, right? So, what are you bringing to sacrifice now? What are you bringing to sacrifice? What animal? You're bringing a goat, you're bringing a bull, you're bringing a ram, and you're going to have to take part in this, okay? You're going to have to, to, to grow close to this animal, and then it's going to be sacrificed, and you're going to have blood sprinkled on you, and it is not sanitary at all. But that's what they had to do. And that's what people try and hold on to, to these these crazy things, these traditions, when God has said, I've done away with those things for you by the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. What he did was final. We can remember what they used to have to do. And praise God that we don't have to do that anymore because of his son. So what sacrifice do we offer him now? It should be our lives. And I'm not saying that you need to shed your blood. Let's be clear. I don't want anybody being confused because we're saying sacrifice and we've been talking about the shedding of blood. But you need to sacrificially give every moment of your life back to Christ for what he did for you. So we live for him, not ourselves. That's why it talks about in Matthew uh, 16, 24, and 25 about those who seek to gain their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for Christ will gain it. We need to be emptying ourselves. That's how we sacrifice for our lives back for Christ, is emptying ourselves so that we can be full of him and do his work. And do his will. And then the third thing here would be the constant need to sacrifice only reminds us of our guilt. So if we were still holding on to these traditions, that guilt still right there too, right? Because they were burdened by their guilt constantly. Constantly. They, they were living under the guilt and the shame of the sin, even though they had just had a sacrifice for the atonement of sins. But it was a sacrifice that wasn't final. It was a sacrifice that was only an outward thing. And so... They still lived under the burden of guilt going forward. Even though you watch a goat run away, right? Out into the wilderness. There goes the goat. See you later. 
taken my guilt with it, but why do I still feel it? Why do I still feel it? Well, because we have been doing nothing but performing acts that lead to death. But the good news is, we serve a living God who can break the bonds of sin, who can remove the bondage of guilt. You don't have to live under the bondage of the guilt of your sin any longer. Not only was Christ the goat, the lamb who was for the forgiveness of sins, but he also removes the guilt. He also removes our guilt. We do not have to live constantly crushed by the weight of our guilt anymore. We are free. We are free. And I'm not talking about free to do whatever we want. We are free to live as Christ would have us to live. We are free to live for Christ because of all that he's done for us. Man, can you, I, can you imagine if you had to live under the bondage of your guilt still? If you had to, to continually stay in those moments of sin, of greed, of pride, of lust, of uh, anger, hatred, the guilt of all of those things, just crushing you. But we, we're, we're not there anymore. We're not there anymore. Because that, that sacrifice of, for, of Christ was eternal. It was everlasting. It was final. And not only does it give us the forgiveness of sins, but it also removes the guilt forever. And you might say, no, I, I still feel it sometimes. And I, would, I, I understand that thought. I understand the thought of still feeling guilt from our sin. Do you want to know why we still feel guilt from our sin? Because we hold on to it. We might even enjoy that feeling a little bit. Oh, woe is me. I did this. And, oh, I can't believe I did this. I've, I've done this against God. And let, me just, let me just remain in my pain. Let me just remain in my guilt for a little while so that everybody can know how remorseful I really am. Well, that's not really being remorseful. God will remove it immediately. Might not remove the consequences of our decisions immediately. But the guilt, we can have freedom from it. Instantaneous. It is an inward cleansing. Our conscience can be cleansed because we serve a living God. We have been given freedom from traditions that could only partially do what the blood of Christ did. The only partial. Don't continue to live under those things. Don't hold on to traditions that do nothing for you anymore. Remember them. Learn from them. See the beauty in what God did for the Israelites, but don't follow them anymore. God has given us a new way, a better way, a better way. A better blood. I read this. The Old Testament, Old Testament sacrifices worked externally. Christ's sacrifice works internally. 
With a cleansed conscience, we are no longer bound by guilt to our past. We are no longer overwhelmed with a sense of inadequacy. Our past sins are gone, and we are released to serve God. Man, there is beauty in those words. We are released to serve God. Today, remove the traditions that are best remembered. Don't hold on to those things. You have been released to follow God, to serve God. He has removed your sins. He can remove your guilt. Cleanse your conscience. And give you freedom like you've never felt before. Why would you not want that? Man, it would be selfish to hold on to those other things, right? It would also, it's also, and this word might be a little harsh, it's ignorant to hold on to those things. Because Jesus died for you. To remove your sins and to remove your guilt so that you can serve him. Are you serving him today or are you holding on to the things of the past? Let them go. Let them go. And follow God. Follow his way. Follow his will. Fight for him. He desires to have that relationship with you. Longs for it. He draws you to him. If you'll bow with me. Lord, thank you for the blood of Christ. Thank you that we are no longer bound by the things that you did away with, with your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we no longer have to be stuck in traditions that can be remembered, but not followed. Lord, help us to live like Jesus has cleansed our souls. Help us to live like we've been made new. And help us to, to serve you with a passion and a desire like we've never done before. Thank you for all that you do for us and continue to do for us, Lord. Help us to, to come back together soon. Help us to, to respond to your word how you would want us to respond to it this morning, Lord. Thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you today for joining in, for watching, for listening, uh, for laughing or making fun of me in whatever way it needs to be done. It's okay. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed and look forward to coming back together again soon. Uh, we'll be back here again next Sunday, it looks like. And then uh, every night this week, we'll be... We'll be live uh, as long as my job stays the way it is. I'm going to keep doing this. And so sometime between 6.15 and 7.30 in the evening time, we should have a short live. And hopefully I can figure out something to, to, to talk about. Uh, so thank you again. Love you all. Have a wonderful morning. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I think everybody